So there's a new router vulnerability out there and it's about a million devices that are vulnerable exposed. John, so you have some news for us about a router exploit that we're seeing? Uh, we do. Uh, so this one's actually got a lot of traction over the past week or so here. Um, there's a particular manufacturer of a home type router. These routers are called GPON routers by a manufacturer called DASAN, D-A-S-A-N. So uh, there's a remote code execution vulnerability that can be leveraged on these devices. It's very simple, trivial to exploit and uh, it allows you basically to you know, execute this program, whatever, and it's a Linux-based thing, I believe. The router software doesn't adequately check um, all the inputs coming in, so there's a way to remotely execute code and take over the device. Uh, initial estimates of how many were actually out there from the company was around 250,000 or something, I think they said. But in Shodan, we're able to see that there's a far larger number of these out there, probably about a million or so. Uh, NetLab 360 put out a very interesting report. What they're able to notice here with these GPON routers in particular is that there are about five or six different botnet families all jockeying to scoop these up into their botnet right now. And so they mentioned Metal, uh, Moose Stick, uh, Mirai, which uh, most of us are familiar with Mirai. Hajime is another one that's very familiar to, I know we've talked about on the show before, and Satori. Uh, Satori is interesting because if everybody hangs around for the internet weather segment, We've got some of that interplay in the internet weather showing up as well with respect to Satori and this activity. So I guess that's the basic nutshell of the story is that, you know, yet again, another uh, type of IoT type of device, a router in this case, that has a remote code execution that can be exploited. Um, because it's in a lot of consumer footprints, there's a very wide deployed base of it out there. The problem with a lot of these routers is people get them they got them 10 years ago, they deployed them. As long as they continue to work, they don't change them, they don't patch them, and you know, they're just gonna stay out there. I notice um, when I unplug or hit the reset button on my home router, it always kind of checks in and sees if there's an update. And if there is, you kind of see the, the fast uh, blink for a while while it's downloading new software. Is that happening now on these, or is this not patched? Yet? I don't believe so. Uh, they're very old, first of all. So you probably have a very new router. Right. Because uh, most modern routers, they have added features. This has become a problem that we talk about a lot. These particular ones we're talking about, these Dasan GPON routers, are at least 10 years old. So they've been out there for quite a while, and um, they probably do not have uh, an auto update kind of capability like a lot of, within the, I would say within the past two, three years, that's become kind of very common in, in uh, newer routers nowadays to have automatic update features. You know, we've heard the story before, right? I mean, the home user is likely not going to take the time to patch the router, let alone even know what the passwords are to it. So, again, like you said, newer routers are good because they can get updated remotely up to the service provider to be able to, uh, to send those patches down, but not surprising. Yeah, I think if I think back 10 years, I remember buying a, a new router and uh, I immediately get out the manual, paper manual, and start looking through it. Right. And I'm looking for the login and the password, and it's on page 21. And I'm thinking, what 20 pages worth of information were more important than here's the default login and password on this device? You know, that shows you the expectation they have of the end user to do anything about it, right? I mean, you move the password all the way back to page 20, and more important, just plug it in, turn it on, look for the green lights. Right. right. And for most people, if it works right out of the box once they plug it in, they're probably going to leave it. Um, which might be a mistake, if, especially if it has default passwords or a vulnerability like this one that we're talking about. If you know that you have these types of devices in your network, which is probably a little unlikely if you're in the United States, um, that you should either swap them out or replace them. You could probably patch it too, but I would say a device that I think it's affecting most of the older models, so I would probably replace it if I was gonna do anything, if I did have them.